be scared of raw beef. I know everybody loves tuna tartare and salmon tartare, but don't sleep on a classic steak tartare. First, we're gonna start with a little hand cut filet mignon. Very tender, very flavorful, and not too much fat. Perfect for a steak tartare. We want to dice our filet into little small pieces. Anytime I go to a steakhouse, I usually start with a steak tartare. It kind of defines how good the rest of the meal will be. Although filet mignon is not my go-to steak when it's cooked, it's a perfect cut for steak tartare. Very tender and just enough beefy flavor to work as a canvas to carry out all these wonderful flavors. You want to mince one shallot. Shallots are just a little sweeter than regular onions. We're going to dice up a few cornichons, baby pickles. These little guys pack a serious punch. Sweet and tangy. Capers. Talk about good things coming in small packages. These little guys pack a wallop of flavor. Lots of fresh chopped parsley to brighten it all up. Some fresh lemon juice to bring the whole thing to life. We're using two mustards, a little gray mustard and a little Dijon mustard. And we're gonna need one egg yolk. We're gonna need one egg yolk to bind it all together and make it ultra smooth. All right, now it's time to make the magic happen. You want to do this last minute so the color of the beef stays nice and red. First, we have our chopped filet mignon. We're going to add in our chopped shallots, chopped cornichons, chopped capers, lots of chopped parsley, little grain mustard, little Dijon mustard, one egg yolk, fresh lemon juice, a couple dashes of Tabasco, a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Always season it with kosher salt, some cracked black pepper, and of course, some extra virgin olive oil. Most importantly, you always mix your steak tartare with a fork, not a spoon. You want to aerate all those ingredients and bring them all together. You want to mix all those ingredients together until it takes on a nice creamy texture, but you can still see all that beautiful beef. A little more lemon never hurt nobody. Before you serve it, you always better taste it. It's a tasty steak tartare. Make sure you get some nice crusty Italian or ciabatta bread. We're gonna season it up with some olive oil, salt, and pepper. Brown it under the oven for our steak tartare crostini. Always season your bread with a little olive oil and salt and pepper before you toast it. We got our golden brown ciabatta, nicely toasted and seasoned. Now it's gonna mound up our steak tartare right on top of that bread. What a nice, thin, even layer. Make sure every bit of that bread is nicely covered. We're just gonna finish it off with a little bit of peppery arugula, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, and a touch of lemon juice. Nice little quick little vinaigrette. Toss that all together and bring these crostinis on home. That, my friends, is a bit of a masterpiece, if I do say so myself. These steak tartare crostinis are rocking in the free world, just like the Eddie Vedder concert I was at last night, and just what the doctor ordered, if you know what I mean. No! Oh!